Right, so now that we know all our three uh, rules, the product rule, the quotient rule, the chain rule, um, we must um, start mixing them, which is where the fun really begins. Sorry, I just realized that I never showed you how the the chain rule helps the product rule to produce the quotient rule, which I'll show you just now. So, how do we mix these rules? Well, for example, um, I've got four questions here before you guys can try some. Determine the derivative if f is equal to, and what do you know, that's definitely a product. Because right here, I've got function number one, which is a function of x, and I've got function number two over here, but very excitingly, that second function is going to be a chain rule, because it in itself is a function within a function. So in order to ready this for me to work with, I'm rather going to rewrite it as f of x before I differentiate as x cubed function number 1 and then x cubed, sorry, x cubed minus 4 to the power of a half. So function number 1 over here in blue, sorry dark blue, and function number 2 in light blue. But function number 2 in light blue has a couple of things we need to consider. It has an outside function, which is the fact that you've got something to the power of a half, and then it's got an inside function, which is the x squared minus 4. So now we have to concentrate fairly hard. So the derivative is, now let's, we're following the product rule. Now the product rule says differentiate the first function. So I'm going to make this 3x squared, differentiate the first function. Leave the second function alone. So leave the x squared minus 4 to the power of a half. Okay, plus leave the first function alone. So that's my x cubed times, and now it's the derivative of the second function. Now the second function is the chain rule. So now we have to follow the chain rule, which says that you differentiate the outside function, which is this guy. So I'm going to bring down the half leave the inside function alone, which is x squared minus 4, to the power of and minus 1 from the exponent, and then multiply by the derivative of the inside function, which is 2x. So note that all of this is the derivative of your second function, that whole thing. It's just the chain rule to find that derivative. So you just got to talk yourself through it fairly slowly. Now, can I neaten this up at all? Well, I can. This first term, you don't have to write with a root if you don't want to. You can. So there we go. It's power of a half. Now the twos would cancel. So the twos cancel here. I wouldn't cross it out in an exam to show your cancelling because then I don't know if you knew to put them there or not. So don't cross it out. But the twos cancel. And I get x to the power of 4 now multiplied by x squared minus 4 to the minus a half. Now we don't bother putting that to the bottom because then there'll be a fraction, then we have to LCD. So that's the level to which we would simplify, unless we needed to now use this and go forward. Right, so that was quite fun. Let's do some more. On to B. Okay, again, this is definitely a product because here we have function number one and here we have function number two. But the moment I see function number two, function number two has a root, which means function number two can be rewritten with an exponent, and it's going to be a composite function. So x cubed minus one, and this is x squared plus four x, all to the power of one third. So actually, yes, this is function number one, and yes, the second thing is function number two, but function number two is a power function, as I call it, because it's raised to a power of something, and we're going to have the outside function in function number two, which is the fact that you've got something to the power of a third, and we've got the inside function in the second function, which is x squared plus 4x. So when we, when we start doing the product rule, we must just be mindful of that fact that we're going to have a chain rule within the product rule. Oh, sorry, now I noticed, as I said this, I noticed that I wrote f dash there, and I wasn't differentiating there. I was just rewriting f. So now I can call this f dashed. And what did the product rule say? The product rule says differentiate the first function, which would be 3x squared. Multiply, leave the second function alone. So leave the x squared plus 4x to the power of a third as is. And then plus 
leave the first function alone, so x cubed minus 1, and now I need to multiply by the derivative of the second function, which is now a chain rule. So first I need to do the outside function, which is 1 third, leave the inside function alone, subtract 1, which is now minus 2 thirds, and now I need to multiply by the derivative of the inside function, which is going to be 2x plus 4. So I have to squeeze it in there. So that's 2x plus 4. So once again, this entire long thing here is the derivative of my second function when I was using the chain rule. Okay, now how neat can we make this uh, first term? Can't really get any neater. So that's x squared plus 4x to the power of a third. My second term probably can't get any neater either, except I would probably bring the one third to the front and then write the three brackets after it. So not really doing much here, just rearranging, which means it's probably a waste of my time. Minus 2 thirds times 2x plus 4. So you can see why we don't bother simplifying any of these because, I mean, that's ridiculous. Great. Right, moving on to question C. Okay, if I look at question C, I think I see a quotient rule because this top function is a power of x. So there's the top function, function number 1, and this bottom function is also a power of x, function number 2. But notice that within function number 1 at the top, you've got a chain rule because you have the outside function because you have something squared and you have the inside function because inside is another uh, function of x which is 2x plus 1. So I don't need to rearrange anything or write it any differently because um, there's no roots here. So I can go straight into my derivative which says first step differentiate the top function. Now that's going to be my chain rule. So I need to differentiate the outside function which is 2, leave the inside function alone, subtract 1 from the exponent, multiply by the derivative of the inside function which is just 2. So that was that whole thing was the derivative of the top. Now the quotient will say differentiate the top, leave the bottom, so 1 minus x squared. Then it says minus, now leave the top, which is 2x plus 1 squared, and then multiply by the derivative of the bottom. Now the bottom is 1 minus 2x, so it's minus 2x. And this is all going to be divided by the bottom function squared. Okay, how neat can we possibly get here? Not much neater, but for example, I can multiply the 2's together, so that's 4. So this is 2x plus 1, 1 minus x squared. I wouldn't bother writing that out. And then this is plus 2x, 2x plus 1 squared, all over 1 minus x squared squared. So we just neaten stuff up in terms of multiplying coefficients together or signs and stuff like that. So that looks pretty cool. Right, on to the last one. Last one again, quotient rule, because I can very quickly see that I've got a top function which is a function of x. I've got a bottom function which is also a function of x and it has a root, which means I'm immediately going to write that as an exponent of a half which is 4x all over, and this is going to be 3x squared plus 1 to the power of a half. Now notice I could actually bring that entire bracket up to the top and then think of this as a product with a negative exponent. You absolutely can. Now that's exactly where the the quotient rule came from. It came from doing it as a product rule. But sometimes it's much easier to just do it as the quotient rule, especially because then it automatically has one denominator. Okay, now unfortunately this top, fortunately this top is easy, but unfortunately this bottom is a little bit more tricky because that bottom has an outside function and an inside function, so it's going to be the chain rule. So my outside function is the fact that you have something to the power of a half, and my inside function is the fact that you have 3x squared plus 1. Right, so let's follow the quotient rule. So the quotient rule says f dashed x would be equal to, and it says differentiate the top, which would be 4, 
multiply by leave the bottom alone. So the bottom is 3x squared plus 1 to the power of a half. Again, notice you don't, you're do not you not bringing that to the top, and so it's not negative a half. The rule says differentiate the top, multiply by the bottom. Then minus, leave the top, and now I need to differentiate the bottom. Now the bottom has an outside function of something to the power of a half. So I would bring down the half, leave the inside function alone, minus 1 from the exponent, so that's the outside function, multiply by differentiate the inside function, which is 6x. So all of this is the derivative of function number 2 using the chain rule. And this is all over the bottom squared. Now fortunately the bottom squared is just going to be 3x squared plus 1 square rooted, which is 12 and a half, and now I'm going to square it, which means it'll disappear, which is quite nice. So to write it a bit more neatly, first term can't be written any more neatly, but the second term, 4 times 6 divided by 2 is actually 24 divided by 2, which is 12, and x times x is x squared, so I think that's a better way to do it. Minus a half, and this is all over 3x squared plus 1. Great, so those were wonderful examples of, of, of quotients and chains and products and chains which is quite fun. So just before uh, we finish, um, you guys are going are to try. The, I've made 10 examples which are combinations of easy products, easy quotients and then quotients and chains etc etc. I'll say this is a PDF with its memo um, in the Google Classroom which means that you can try these and then you can mark them. Please don't forget to ask any questions um, because sometimes it's quite hard to figure out what came from what, especially in these more complicated ones. So don't forget to ask questions where you need help. But before I do let you loose on those, just to quickly show you where did the quotient rule come from. If you have f of x over g of x as a quotient, you can rewrite that as f of x times g of x to the minus 1. Notice I didn't write g minus 1 of x because then that's actually the notation for an inverse. So we don't write it like that. So now what's the derivative of this? The derivative of f of x times g of x to the minus 1 equals, well, think of this as a product. So this is uh, function number 1, and this is function number 2. So let's do the product rule. Now the product rule, the product rule says differentiate the first function, so that would be f dashed x, leave the second function alone. So this would be g x to the minus 1. And then it said plus leave the first function, and then differentiate the second function. Now, the derivative of the second function is now a chain because the minus 1 is the outside function. So differentiate the outside function, which would be minus 1, leave the inside function alone, minus 1 from the exponent. So that will be the outside function. Multiply by the derivative of the inside function. And there I've done the product. Now it looks really messy, but what we can now do is start knitting this up a bit. So actually this is f dashed x over g of x, if I move that negative exponent guy down to the bottom. This is f of x times minus, so actually instead of writing a plus here, I'm now going to write a minus, so I've taken that into account. This I'm going to take to the bottom and write it as g of x squared, because he had a negative exponent and this is g dashed x. And then what do you know? What you do is you find an LCD, and your LCD is g of x squared. So I need to multiply the first numerator by g of x, because its denominator would have been written multiplied by g of x. And voila, once you neaten it up and LCD it, you actually have the quotient rule. Now, of course, you don't have to know that, but it's pretty nifty to see why the bottom is squared and things like that. It's really, really cool. So that's why we needed the chain rule to figure out how the product um, derives the quotient rule, which is pretty cool. Okay, back to work with you. 
exercise one. Good luck.